in the present era taxonomist and uh, evolutionary biologist they quite often talk about molecular phylogeny see phylogeny we know uh, that deals with evolutionary relationship among the different species of uh, animals or plants or other kinds of organisms and if we start studying or if we study this phylogenetic aspect by considering the uh, molecular uh, markers like nucleotide sequences or amino acid sequences in the protein then that becomes the field of molecular phylogeny so a molecular approach to trace interspecies relationship that forms the area of molecular phylogeny and as i just mentioned the uh, molecules which could be uh, considered or the markers which can be considered to study molecular phylogeny could be the sequence of amino acid and uh, uh, the nucleotide sequence so these are two markers if we consider uh, specific proteins uh, particularly those proteins which have undergone uh, moderate amount of changes during the course of long evolution then uh, we have to see their amino acid sequence and we have to compare such sequence uh, with the sequence present in other organisms uh, which may be uh, related to that specific uh, uh, species so interspecific comparison of amino acid sequence of those proteins which have undergone moderate amount of changes that uh, could be useful exactly the same way the dna sequences Uh, of uh, such proteins can be useful uh, here in this particular uh, table you can see amino acid differences and minimal mutational distance between humans and other organisms for cytochrome c protein cytochrome c protein uh, that is made up of uh, nearly 100 amino acids in our case 104 amino acid uh, make uh, this particular protein and we can have this protein uh, of our own means our own amino acid uh, sequence of this protein and we can compare it with the amino acid sequence present in the same protein of other organisms and we can see that uh, what amount of differences in the amino acid sequence as well as what amount of minimal mutation uh, has occurred in its gene both aspects could be looked into what we find that uh, the amino acid sequence means if you go uh, analyzing the first amino acid of ours and the other organisms or other you know animals and plants which are shown in this particular table you will find that uh, not a single amino acid difference exists between humans and chimpanzee so zero zero means we and chimpanzee both do not show uh, any amino acid uh, difference in the entire sequence of the uh, polypeptide chain uh, but if we consider a rhesus monkey in that case a single amino acid difference exists this shows that rhesus monkey is uh, evolutionarily not so close to human as chimpanzee uh, likewise if you consider the cytochrome c protein amino acid sequence of rabbit you find nine amino acid difference uh, pig 10 dog 10 horse 12 so on the basis of the amino acid variation you can have the idea that which of the organisms are closer to humans so this comparison has been made between human and other organisms we find that uh, horses they have 12 amino acid difference penguin although it is a bird but it has independently evolved um, uh, getting separated from mammals so it has 11 variations but at the level of nucleotide you will find 
more variation exists in comparison to the other uh, you know mammals then a uh, moth which is an arthropod in this case you find that there are 24 amino acid variations in case of yeast you know 38 amino acid variation exist so uh, if you consider those uh, organisms uh, which are distinctly related to humans you will find more and more number of amino acid variations now uh, yeast you know it is a, a fungus and uh, definitely we hope that it will have more variations but this is a protein which is to a large extent conserved one and uh, this has undergone very little modification that is why otherwise if you consider some other kind of protein you may find uh, even more number of amino acid variation now here the minimal mutational distance is also shown uh, between human and chimpanzee no nucleotide difference or mutational difference exist whereas uh, if you observe the other uh, you know animals like monkey a single minimal uh, mutational distance is there then 12 then 13 then 13 so as i told if you consider distinctly related organism we expect and we find uh, more uh, mutational difference so our distance uh, here the same protein cytochrome c that is has been considered cytochrome c protein sequences compared to humans and other organisms they have been considered percent homology uh, has been observed so you see uh, human individuals when they will be considered themselves no difference will occur at all among them but if you consider chimpanzee then uh, we have 100 percent similarity so in this case similarity is being depicted uh, chimpanzee shows 100 percent uh, similarity with ours then uh, you can consider mouse 91 percent similarity exists between humans and mouse humans and donkey they show 89 percent similarity horse 88 percent similarity lamprey which is a uh, petromyzan you know which is uh, a um, uh, cyclostome or you can say jawless vertebrate that has 80 percent uh, similarity with humans uh, a carp a bony fish that has 78 percent similarity with humans and uh, this fungus saccharomyces it has 67 percent if you observe even uh, means uh, here means a plant it has 66 percent since in all these cases cytochrome c protein exists then its comparison could be made uh, as i said the amino acid sequence could be compared and here even the unicellular uh, organisms like euglena or tetrahymena they have been considered and we find that they are showing lesser similarity than the others so on this very basis we can have idea uh, that uh, which of the organisms are closely related and which are distantly related and this can uh, this information can be used to uh, build up uh, phylogenetic tree or dendrogram depicting the uh, evolutionary relationship among these organisms this is uh, a figure in which you can see the um, actually this particular figure shows uh, alpha globin uh, amino acid uh, differences between humans and other organisms so see here it is uh, the human individual here it is written that number of amino acid differences compared to human but it is for alpha globin we know that uh, this uh, globin protein alpha globin protein is found in the uh, blood and it actually helps to carry oxygen um, uh, from the uh, specific portion of the uh, body uh, to the internal tissues so um, it is found not only in humans but uh, in other vertebrates also so all these vertebrates that is humans cow kangaroo then an amphibian like newt a bony fish like carp and cartilaginous fish like shark and these have been compared because all these have alpha globin protein and what we find that human uh, shows 17 uh, 
amino acid differences with cow it shows 27 amino acid differences with kangaroo which is a metatherian mammal so here now you can see that this metatherian mammal is a distantly related animal so we have more uh, differences with this than cow then newt which is an amphibian uh, it is a neuron amphibian 62 amino acid differences exist and carp bony fish 68 amino acid difference 79 that is a shark it has maximum number of difference and on this very basis uh, we also know the time period when they actually uh, originated and evolved so sharks they uh, were actually they originated 440 million years back carp fishes they originated 400 million years back then newt they originated 350 million years back so we can see that there exists correlation between the time period when the different kinds of animals actually evolved and the number of amino acid differences they have um, with the humans uh, so uh, this kind of information can be used to uh, build up idea uh, that uh, how uh, differences do occur in course of time uh, and particularly those uh, organisms which are distinctly related to someone they will have more variations than those which are uh, closely related and uh, they will expect it to evolve uh, very you know closely now in this uh, uh, diagram you can see the ancestral gene that is uh, the uh, gene which actually codes for globin protein so this gene originated you know long back uh, more than 600 million years back this gene actually came in existence and then it duplicated into two and uh, both are now referred as alpha and beta you know uh, globin gene so a single gene uh, can undergo duplication process so here duplication of ancestral gene that took place and uh, since they got modified or they accumulated mutational uh, mutations in them they were considered as separate one they become as alpha and beta so here you see they, because of mutation uh, they become two separate you know gene segments and then uh, presently we have alpha and beta both globin and not only these two but others which are very much homologous to these two they are also present and this beta gene family is there that is found in uh, chromosome 11 and the alpha one that is found in our chromosome 16 so uh, we have these two genes what happened this alpha gene actually it uh, mm, uh, then again duplicated in the same chromosome and formed you know alpha and uh, zeta gene segments zeta you can say that because of mutation in it it became uh, a different one and named as zeta and then they have again got uh, gone uh, you know differences because they have duplicated and they have accumulated uh, mutations in them and presently we have alpha uh, genes which are you know duplicate here then some of the alpha genes they have undergone um, such kind of mutations that they have become inactive so pseudo alpha gene segments are also there likewise uh, this zeta and pseudo zeta gene segments exist the pseudo you know alpha gene segment also exist exactly the same way this beta gene it has also undergone duplication and then mutational change and uh, uh, it forms you know beta gene family and uh, the different you know gene segments are epsilon then gamma g gamma a then pseudo beta gene delta uh, gene and this uh, beta globin gene so uh, all these we have because these two genes are the ancestral gene actually duplicated and then it got uh, um, differentiated because of mutational change it also got you know um, shifted on or transposed onto different chromosomes so presently we have two gene families alpha and beta present on two separate chromosomes and uh, in this uh, table 
you can see similarity in the amino acid sequence between human globin protein so uh, here alpha globin has been compared with the zeta one we find alpha alpha definitely it will show 100 percent similarity but when you will compare this alpha with zeta so 58 uh, uh, percent similarity uh, among the amino acids could be seen likewise the alpha globins and the beta globin genes have also been are there sorry their amino acid sequences have been compared and we find between beta uh, globin and alpha globin 42 percent similarity exist between alpha and gamma 39 percent similarity exist between alpha and epsilon 37 percent similarity exist here you can also see the similarity between the uh, beta and also beta so you will find that this beta and uh, gamma they have 73 percent you know similarity between beta and epsilon 75 percent similarity is there so what idea we get that when we compare uh, beta gene family we find uh, more similarity but when we compare alpha and beta we find less similarity because these two genes they got separated long back and then they accumulated uh, mutational change independently they have undergone changes um, in the independent manner and that is why we expected more variation between alpha and beta and uh, less variation among the beta globin uh, you know proteins of the same family you know so uh, this we are observing in this table if you carefully observe you will find that all the uh, proteins which belong to beta globin family they show uh, more you know similarity than when compared with the uh, uh, proteins of alpha gene family Okay, this uh, uh, you know line diagram shows the phylogenetic uh, aspect of alpha and beta uh, genes. You know, this gene originated uh, nearly 600 to 800 million years back. It came to existence. Still, it is found in uh, myoglobin, and this actually got separated in the form of alpha and beta gene nearly 450 to 500 million years back, and then this alpha gene family it formed actually uh, the different parts like alpha 1 or pseudo alpha 1 or theta 1 and uh, zeta and exactly the same way beta gene family also got you know differentiated duplicated and differentiated into so many forms like beta delta then uh, gamma a gamma g and this epsilon in this uh, dendrogram uh, you can see the phylogenetic relationship between humans chimpanzee gorilla orangutan and gibbon what has been done that uh, uh, dna dna hybridization um, was made actually that is dna of different all these different species um, were actually extracted out and then um, uh, such dna double strand structures were separated and uh, fragmented and they were hybridized with each other and uh, at definite temperature means uh, temperature was used actually to uh, dissociate the two uh, segments uh, which um, that is complementary pairing occurring between the uh, DNA portions or segments coming from two different sources and based on the hybridization or pairing you know uh, percentage what was found that humans uh, have been more close to pygmy chimpanzee and then uh, also close to common chimpanzee than other you know primates like gorilla orangutan or gibbon so in this uh, dendrogram you can see that human has more closeness with pygmy chimpanzee or you can say chimpanzee as such and then it is uh, um, then related with gorilla and next one comes um, orangutan and this gibbon in um, similarity and similarity basis it is not so close as others uh, presently we can use uh, mitochondrial dna or some other you know dna we can sequence them means presently the technology has uh, 
grown to a very good extent we can actually extract our dna we can sequence the uh, portions of dna uh, which is uh, useful for uh, observing phylogenetic aspect particularly those segments which have accumulated changes but not at a very high speed not at a very high you know frequency so moderately conserved sequences can be used to see phylogenetic relationship and on that very basis uh, primates or other kinds of animals even plants are uh, people have used such kind of thing uh, to see phylogenetic relationship among microbial species also